This is London. Familiar words over the wartime transatlantic radio. To be precise, the Foreign Office. Scene of a day in the life of a distinguished American. For being presented here with the CBE, Commander Order of the British Empire, was Mr. C.J. Latter, Managing Director of the Associated British Picture Corporation and founder of the British Tent of the Variety Club. If this was a big day for C.J. himself, it was no less so for his gracious wife. Mrs. Natter was greeted by Major Huskinson, an old friend of the family. There also were the daughters, their husbands, and the grandchildren. The Major greeted one of the O'Neill twins. Presumably, he knew which one. This was, of course, a gathering of the clan. An exciting occasion, one which all present would remember for the rest of their lives. Mrs. Peggy Eberson, the elder daughter, led the way as all went inside. Bringing up the rear was Mr. Ladder himself. This was evidently a time when a man should have his family about him. There's no mistaking whose car this is. On the front is the badge of the Variety Club. Lower down, the initials familiar to the whole of show business. The car would be kept waiting some time. It was inside the Foreign Office that the big event was to be enacted. For them all, except the imperturbable CJ himself, these were nervous minutes, waiting for the official presentation. When the CBE is conferred on someone who is not a British subject, it's usual for the ceremony to be conducted by the Foreign Secretary. For the head of the family, his daughter Peggy and granddaughter Suzanne and everyone else present, there was nothing to do but await the arrival of Mr. R.A. Butler. There are times when the minutes pass very slowly. However, there was no sign of nervousness about the most important man of the day, who has for years made England his home and second country. There lay the CBE, soon to be conferred, a mark that Mr. Latter's adopted country recognizes him as a man worthy of high honor. The editor of Pathy News, G. Thomas Cummins, congratulated the recipient to be. Clearly a jovial, warm-hearted man, this big American. Colonel Bill Heald, special representative of the Duke of Edinburgh's award scheme, was gratified to see an old friend receiving worthy recognition. The scheme has benefited handsomely through the Variety Club. Mrs. Latter, Peggy Eberson, Drew Eberson, Suzanne, Jack and Dorothy Halperin, and the twins, Peg and Pam. Now came the Foreign Secretary, welcoming and congratulating Mr. Latter. On such occasions, Mr. Butler sheds the cares of office and becomes a genial host, a role not difficult to fulfill in this company amongst the family of a great man in business and a dynamic force behind, perhaps, the biggest charity of modern times. Mr. Butler made the presentation of the CBE informally. And the Foreign Secretary led the applause. One of the world's leading statesmen was in company with a businessman of international renown, a leader in the world of show business on both sides of the Atlantic. Everything about C.J. Latter is on the great scale. His commanding stature, his force of personality, his business ability, his vision, and with all that, his greatness of heart. For it was that most endearing quality that drew him many years ago into the Variety Club. Few giants of business have the inclination to devote enormous energy to the welfare of handicapped children. Few have the deep sympathies enabling them to sense misfortune and burn with desire to help. Mr. Butler and the family drank the great man's health. Thousands not present drank it in the spirit.
describe C.J. as a giant in show business, we may perhaps adapt these lines from measure for measure. Oh, it is excellent to have a giant strength. Most excellent to use it for the general good. What different walks of life are trodden by these two men? Each could appreciate the stature of the other. Mr. Butler was interested to learn that the Variety Club in Britain has raised more than one and a half million pounds. This, of course, was no occasion for suggesting a subscription. Time now for the CBE to be handed round and admired. When Mr. and Mrs. Latter came to England nearly 16 years ago, perhaps nothing was further from their minds than that they would one day be here at the Foreign Office for such a pleasant purpose. How gratifying to CJ to be a prophet in the country of his adoption and have the CBE to prove it. Twins have always known that they have a wonderful grandfather. They know now that the British government appreciates him too. When it was all over, the opportunity came for another memorable family group, filmed outside the Foreign Office. There was no doubt that to them all, the presentation had been a delightful experience. As for the head of the family, he said afterwards this was one of the greatest days of his life. But this had been a privilege shared. In honouring this outstanding American, Britain honoured herself. They were leaving the Foreign Office to continue its normal business of soothing a troubled world. The new CBE has soothed it on the individual level. The tragic handicaps that arouse his pity called forth his help. With God-given energy, he threw himself into a noble work, enthusing others, brilliantly organizing, lighting such a candle as by the grace of God shall never be put out. An unusual caller, this man of the Foreign Office, not an official person, but an initiator through private channels of great benefactions. Thousands there are who every day bless the name of C.J. Latter.